Sound design for previous Need for Speeds is very over the top, objects whooshing by and smacking into things. We still, of course, have those elements because it brings the excitement. But we've gone with a much more cinematic overall feel to the game. I came from Los Angeles where I worked on a, a lot of films and I sort of tried to figure out how we can bring that feel to the game. One big aspect, of course, is the score. Brian's score really emphasizes the excitement and the power of racing and the adrenaline rush. Part of the more cinematic, serious, intimate feel of this game is more believable voices. You head around front, I'll cover the back. Got it. It's similar to previous games in that we have cops and uh, some of the cop chatter that you're probably used to. What's different though is that we have a main character this year. You see his face, you hear his voice, and you can get out of the car. We get early sort of storyboards of what it's going to be like. We break down what we need from the actor. So we need an effort for this particular movement. We need a strain, we need a reach, we need this and that. You put in the vocalizations, it sort of gives you that connection with Jack. Having a character that has a voice in our game is a big leap for Need for Speed. The character's not an overwhelming presence in the game, but you're no longer just watching a, an empty car drive across the screen. That's allowed us to bring a lot more dramatic and emotional elements to the sound of Need for Speed. The whole thing is all about emotional and drama and, and keeping up the tension and the excitement and everything. So we don't want to keep it super literal. We try to use whatever sounds we can to drive the emotion. We're not necessarily looking to say, if he's running or punching, we need like a literal punch sound. This is just all our hits. So anything that's just a big, just kind of a big impact. We might take a literal punch sound and we'll find some other sounds, maybe some explosions or some, you know, car drops or some really low, like, subwoofer kind of bangs, and we'll kind of layer them all up just to build up that emotion and that drama that we need. Overriding through everything we do is how do we make this feel more human, more intimate. Just overall getting a lot of movement, a lot of believability behind who's driving that car. We want to make you feel like there's an actual driver. When he hammers on the gas, there might be a little play between the transmission and the engine. So those pops are actually driving the visual effects from audio, which is something we've never done before. When he shifts hard, you're going to hear it. Again, that same play, a little oscillation between the drivetrain and the engine. All those fine details are really what makes the engine come alive. Our car here, for example, is not just you know a recorded sound effect, it's made up of layers upon layers of sounds that are listening to physics and they're listening to the context of the game. Essentially, you're creating just the rules and the player's creating the mix and it's different every time somebody plays the game. I need a status update on that chopper now! This is all the logic that goes into just playing this tire skid sounds. Each tire has its own physics information and what type of surface it's on. The sound gets processed and then sent out into the main mix of the game. This is just the skids. You can hear some of the reverb in the background. As you go faster, the skids change in quality, change in sound. You know, if you're going 100 miles an hour sideways, it'll have a completely different sound. It's reacting in the way we feel a human would actually be applying the throttle and brake based on the inputs that the player is giving. It's so hard to get the actual feel of driving and not the feel of just controlling a car on the screen. That's where we really put the extra effort. A really nice system, really nice setup, it just allows you to immerse yourself even more in the experience.